Support for Winfluence and all the shows on the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Storyblock. There's no better way to future-proof your business than switch to a headless content management system. That means one place to update all your digital content. 82% of those who have switched to a headless CMS like Storyblock report better productivity, efficiency, and revenue. Sign up for a free account to test and see for yourself at storyblock.com slash winfluence. That's storyblock without the C dot com slash winfluence. Folks, being a guest on a podcast is perhaps the most effective way to build your own credibility and authority on what you know or what your company does. You can get booked as a guest on lots of podcasts, and Outlier Audio is great at helping you do just that. Outlier Audio focuses on getting entrepreneurs, investors, and business professionals booked on podcasts. Tell your brand story without the need to interrupt an audience with an ad. Be the reason they listen to the podcast. Get started with a five-podcast booking trial to see if you like it. Find out more at outlieraudio.com slash bookme. That's outlieraudio.com slash bookme. On this episode of Winfluence. I think really the premise for this is to tell everybody, you know, let's connect. Let's talk. Let's learn about each other. And let's move forward from this point onwards thinking about how we're going to do things together going forward, no matter what that is. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. We have a special treat today on the show. I'm going to step aside and let you hear someone else guide a discussion about influence marketing. There's another great show on the Marketing Podcast Network, which Winfluence is a part of, and it's called The Endless Coffee Cup. Matt Bailey of SiteLogic is the host of the show. He welcomes expert guests from all around the world on a variety of marketing and business topics. Matt and I have known each other since an event called Blogger Social back in 2008. He comes from the SEO segment of the marketing space, but he's an agency owner, an entrepreneur, an all-around brilliant guy. You should definitely subscribe to the Endless Coffee Cup podcast. Matt does a great job of dissecting the expertise of his guests, which is why I wanted to share a specific episode of Matt's show with you today. Back in early February, Endless Coffee Cup featured Rashid Al-Awadi. He is leading the New Media Academy in Dubai. Its mission is to transform the Arabic region through digital skills and developing influencers. But as Matt points out, it's not the way most people think of influencers. It's the way we tend to think of them here on Winfluence as people with influence. Al Awadi and his team are working to develop people to change the region in areas of women's rights, economics, sport, environment, and more. I was fascinated with this discussion. As you can probably tell, this is my kind of influence conversation. So I wanted to share it with you. A segment of Matt Bailey's recent episode of the Endless Coffee Cup with Rashid Al-Awadi is coming up for you today on Winfluence. Of course, if you want to listen to the full episode or subscribe to Matt's show, I'll leave links to both in the show notes, or you can just search for Endless Coffee Cup on your favorite podcast app. Before we get to that, I want to touch on two fantastic supporters of Winfluence today that you need to hear about and hear about frequently. You've heard me talk about Tagger quite a bit on this show. That's because they are our presenting sponsor. Tagger is a complete influencer marketing solution. I actually just spent a couple of days with the Tagger team last week at the Influencer Marketing Show in New York. And not only is Tagger great software, but the team is just really amazing to be around. Pete Kennedy and his crew really do have the growth and best interests of you in mind when you're a customer of Tagger. I'm not going to spend more time today talking about the features. You've heard them before. You'll hear them again. You know I use it. I think you should check it out too. It might be right for your brand or agency. Go to jason.online slash tagger to get a free demo and see if tagger is right for you. That URL again is jason.online slash tagger. And you may have heard me talking about the LinkedIn marketing solutions folks before the show or maybe during the breaks lately. That's because LinkedIn has partnered with me to offer you $100 advertising credit to get your message in front of the right kind of decision makers. Now, I use LinkedIn advertising to target leads based on job description, company, seniority, industry, and more. That means I'm not wasting advertising spend getting my message in front of people who aren't my ideal customer. You can too. 
Get started with a $100 ad credit just for listening to Winfluence. Go to linkedin.com slash Winfluence today. That's right, linkedin.com slash Winfluence. I actually did it myself just to test it out and see if I could also qualify for the ad credit, which fortunately I could. Um, and so I just you just enter your name and your information and a, you know, a day later or half a day later or how many ever hours later it takes, you get the ad credit in your account and you can start a campaign. So even if you haven't done LinkedIn advertising yet, you can test it. 100 bucks, free ads. I'm down. And I wanted to share that with you. Thank you to the LinkedIn Marketing Solutions team for that offer for all of us. A special treat today, Matt Bailey's Endless Coffee Cup, a sample for you in which Matt talks to Rashid Al-Awadi about influencing change in the Arab world. That's next on Winfluence. Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, you look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. Okay, folks, as promised, here's Matt Bailey and the Endless Coffee Cup Podcast. Enjoy. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the Endless Coffee Cup Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Bailey, and I've got a great guest today, one who I, we have gotten to know each other the past couple of years working on a project in the United Arab Emirates. I would like to introduce you to Rashid Alawadi. Rashid, how are you doing today? I'm great, Matt. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Rashid, I... From the day we met, you have had some of the greatest stories about how you got into social media, how you got into, you know, YouTube and, and just listeners. I have to tell you, so Roshan and his brother are both foodies. And I mean, you had to be one of the first in the region to have a YouTube channel where you guys were traveling the world. Yeah, so... So it actually all didn't start on, on, on content. It all, it all started because my brother and I had a dream, and the dream was to open up a restaurant. <laughs> and that dream came about when we were super little because my father was in the business of toys, and he was the agent for a number of different brands in the region over here, and specifically Hello Kitty. And I remember when we were young, yeah, we we actually go, he, he had a store in the first mall in the whole country in Dubai. Oh. And every weekend, yeah, he'd take us to the store and we'd go eat at parties at Carl Jr.'s. And then we'd come up and we'd, we'd play inside the store with all the toys. And they were like Smurfs and they were Hello Kitty and they were uh, the Snorkels and they were the Trolls and all this stuff. And it was It was great. Needless to say, we were the first people invited to every birthday, by the way, in those, uh, those days, because we, we brought the best gifts yep. for everybody. But I remember when we were young, my older brother and I, Mohammed, we said, wouldn't it be cool if the restaurant was actually attached to this toy store? And ever since then, that was when I was probably, you know, eight, nine, ten. My brother was three years older. And that dream kind of stayed with us. As we went through college, we actually built a concept for a restaurant. And we never got a chance to do it. We, we graduated from college. We came back. We both got jobs, both of us in multinational FMCG companies. And, and that, that dream was still, like, still alive. But we had a, a little bit of an issue. Like here in the region, specifically in the UAE, the, the concept of an SME sector, a small business, mm. it didn't quite exist. There wasn't anybody that, that gave you money like there was no banks that would loan you any sme money because uh, <laughs> wow. nobody did that you you know you, you were either somebody who already had money and did your business or you went and, and worked for somebody and i'd say we were probably one of the first smes to get funded through an entity called the sheikh Mohammed bin rashid the sme program and and, and we, we ran some money after we tried everything to open our restaurant we we, we got some 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 funding opened up a restaurant, and then here we are, this is 2008, after eight years of working on this concept, and the concept was very cool, it was the first globally branded shawarma restaurant, (laughs) 
except the shawarma restaurant was, you know, the ingredients, the way that we were making it was like, like a five-star hotel. And uh, it was, it, everything was, anyways, we, we, we got some money, we started, we were about to open the restaurant, and then we realized, we're like, wow, how are we going to compete with big brands? We have no money for marketing. We understand the game of marketing, but the game of marketing in 2008 and 9 required a lot of money for traditional media. And it just so happens that Facebook and Twitter suddenly appeared in the UAE. Yep. And we said, you know what? We're going to use this to our advantage. And we were one of the first few people on social media, on Facebook and, and, and Twitter. And what we did was something very simple, Matt. In 2008, we found this app called the Twitter Fall. We put a suite in our restaurant and we put hashtags related to our restaurant. And we encouraged everybody that came in to write about their experiences. <laughs> now, that meant when you come to, to the restaurant, you could see what everybody was thinking. If it was good, great. Was even the team feel energized and everything. If it was not good, we immediately addressed everything. So it was kind of a check and balance for operations. Right. But we built such a big community on the back of that. In those days, Matt, we had 3,000 Twitter followers in Dubai and, and it was actually globally. And that was, that I think, that would probably equate to something like 3 million in, in today's world. Right. 3,000 tweet yeah. followers in, in, in 2008. And, and, I, and I kid you not, because we, we were actually invited to speak on a panel with uh, the gentleman who was running social media for President Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. So he's the one that actually was heading social media, former U.S. President Barack. He was heading the whole campaign, and we were on this panel with him talking about how we, you know, we wrap shawarma as we have this community. <laughs> and, you know, the person who comes to the restaurant uh, seven days in a row becomes the mayor of, you know, our restaurant called Wapita. And it was, it was, just, it was just amazing. And we, we continued to build on the community. And it was just a fantastic experience. And we, a lot of people from around the world actually reached out to us and said, wow, you guys are doing something that, that's, that's very, very unique. And I think that was kind of the first steps that we took into social media marketing. And I think... I want to say we're one of the first people in the world that actually used it in that manner. You know, we actually, by the way, my brother and I never used our real names. You know, we had names related to restaurants. So he was Wild Pita. I was Gourmet Shawarma. That's how we introduced, <laughs> you know, one another. It was, I mean, it was super, super, super exciting in, in, in those days to kind of build this from, uh, from scratch. Oh, absolutely. I, I, you know, that early to be that innovative with how you were using it really just, you know, it, I, I mean, I look back on how people use Twitter and it was a lot of a formulation there. I love how you explain that because it was just so organic the way it came around that, hey, we found this app. Well, here's what we could do with it. And just developing it from there. I love just the the organicness if yeah. that's a word, of how yeah. you develop that. Yeah, you, you know, Matt, the, the thing with, with us also, the, the other thing that we did, you know, I mean, social media is all about this community that you build, that engages with you. And I think from a very early stage, we focused on that a lot. We were also, I believe, the first restaurant in the world that said, hey, Twitter followers, what would you like on the menu? <laughs> and we had a list of stuff, and what they chose, we put on the menu. We said, hey, guys, we've got this wall. We don't know what to paint. It, you know, what color to paint it? What do you think? And we did that. And, right. and we kind of did that throughout everything. The packaging was done by, like that. The, the decor was done like that. The menu was done like that. And the community felt very empowered. They felt like that was their space. And what happened after that, Matt, is people started to organize events at our restaurant. Like, we'd walk into the restaurant and they'd be like, like six people playing Scrabble, and we'd be like, oh, hey, what are you, and they're like, yeah, we're the Scrabble club, you know, and we decided that this is going to be our venue, and we're just going to be here, you know, uh, people were organizing, like, comedy nights, and open mic nights, and things were just happening organically, because we built wow. that community, and I think that as a concept, if you take that, that is, it, it's so powerful to, to do that even today, and people kind of lose uh, uh, track of of, of that, you know, they, they forget that that's the whole point of having a social media channel or channels today. Right. Absolutely. It's, you know, if anything today, it's just so formulaic. And I feel like there is a lot of following the headlines that I just read that people are doing this. Let's do the same thing. 
without that focus on what's best for us, what would work for our community, and how do we serve those closest to us? I, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, and, and, and you know what happened after that is we, <laughs> we basically, we, we had worked so hard on that restaurant and, and we were just like super tired. I mean, we, 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 we wanted to take a break and we decided to, to travel. And, and as with everything that we did, we, we went online, we went on Twitter and we said, hey guys, where do you think Mohammed and I can travel to for two days that's within a four hour radius, you know, we don't need visas for, this was in 2008, a long time ago, when we, we couldn't walk into to every country, you know, right. and, and get a visa on, on, on arrival. And, uh, and it, it turns out the only country that we could do that was Sri Lanka. Oh. So we literally hopped on a plane, we went to Sri Lanka. And in those days we had, we had two phones. And, and when we went there, we just started to take photos of everything and videos of everything and post it on social media. So we were doing this daily kind of vlog style content in 2008. <laughs> and I know there were people that did that before us, for sure. But we were kind of taking pictures of everything. We were in, in the taxi and we were talking to a taxi driver. And we were just uploading everything onto our, our channels. And it was an amazing experience. And when we got back, people said, wow, we absolutely loved that trip. We actually felt like we were on the trip with you guys. You've never had that experience before. And my brother and I then sat and thought, you know, this is actually an idea. There could be an actual travel show about two Emirati guys dressed like this who travel around the world, <laughs> connect with change makers, and everything they do, so which country they go to, where they stay, what they eat, who they meet, is all a result of Q&As with their community. And we actually took that concept to a company called 2454, and then Google came on board as the first sponsor of, of the oh. show. Yeah, Robert Kinsel from, 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 from Google said, you know, I love the concept, I'll give you some money. We had intercontinental hotels on board, and then Dubai TV came on board and said, I want to distribute this, and, and we ended up doing a two-year travel show. We traveled through 24 countries, mm. and it was brilliant. And Matt, when we did that, that was we, we had the concept in 2009. We actually started shooting season one in 2012, uh, or 2000, yeah, 2012. And in 2012, the concept was have this hashtag on screen. You know, if you're listening to music, write on screen what that music is. We took right. tweets and we put them on screen. And I dare say, if we look back at 2012, if, if anybody was doing that, at that time, which today is customary, right? You watch right. any show and you're like, there's a hashtag, there's, you know, whatever. We had a QR code on screen. <laughs> and could you imagine people in 2012 saying, what are you guys doing? Why do you have all this stuff on screen? Yeah. And it was because we were trying to always engage our audiences. We always were aware that people are consuming content on multiple devices. And we were trying to move people back and forth from their phones to TV, and we were just trying to engage on, on different levels, you know? If you like this music, by the way, we have a playlist which you can you can go to. This place that we're going to is is actually on Foursquare and you can you can check it out. So we were just innovating as much as we could with, with content. And I remember also telling the, the network that we're, you know, the, the crew is, you know, the camera guys, the videographers, and we said, we're, we're taking a videographer with us on travel. They said, why? Because we said, well, we're going to do we're gonna do live content on social media. They said, wow, okay, are you sure? And we said, yes. And we actually had a social media manager in 2012 as part of the crew. Once again, something very unique in, in those days. No, no, shows, no shows did that. But once again, it was all about the community, Matt. You know, everything goes back to what do you do? It, it's not just about producing that content. It's about... Producing content that creates conversation and engagement and, and a continued conversation. And that was always the goal with us. Absolutely. And, and when I look at your content, it, it's fantastic because, y you know, I, I look in, you're, you're trying on costumes in Rio. You're in the Philippines doing survival with the, you know, the survival guys. You're wrestling luchadors in Mexico, which probably has to be one of my favorite. So, yeah, it's not just you're, you're going and seeing things. The, the participation in the area that you're in, in the people, the change makers, as you said, 
that is so inviting because you're you're experiencing things that you know people have have heard about maybe they've seen and, and now you're there and taking part in it and so it's a it's a very exciting video when you watch it's it's nonstop what's going on and what's happening <laughs> it, it was an amazing experience i mean i think there was a few few other goals for us matt i mean one of them was you know when we were scrolling through you know tv channels around the world we would uh, consistently see people uh, dressed like this in in the kandora in a negative way when we looked at global global yes. news and media you know and we, we we thought you know what you've probably seen people dressed like this on screen but have you seen people in real life dressed like that and that was kind of the reason why we dressed in that manner and I'll tell you this, every guest that we met, we, we, we'd had some conversations with them, but never with a uh, video on. Mm-hmm. And when we got there, we'd actually roll the video and meet them for the first time with us being dressed like this. Yes. So imagine us being in a little town in Chile, you know, <laughs> and meeting people for the first time dressed like this. And, you know, obviously, like, apprehensiveness the first time they meet us. And, you mm-hmm. know, just like shyness and quietness. But as soon as we start talking... And as soon as we talk, talking about the things that we love, that we share, everybody was like, wow, you know, we've never met somebody dressed like that before, but we never imagined that you guys have the same interests in terms of <laughs> music and food and art and, and culture and things like that. So I think that was very important for us to kind of, kind of change that stereotype a little bit. Naturally, we're from the UAE, but this was the easiest way to represent overall Arabs. Cause you know, when you look at somebody like this, you know, straight away you're, 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 you're Arab. So that was a, that was a big goal for us as, uh, as well. Matt. Well, you were truly ambassadors, you know, ambassadors, as you said, not just for the UAE, but for the, the Arab region to go represent. And, and, you know, it's funny because this hits on the theme of a number of shows we've done on, on just multiculturalism or communication, is once you get to know someone in a different culture and once you start to share a meal, a conversation, immediately those barriers just start to go down. It, it's hard to apply a stereotype when you're getting to know someone. And, you know, you, you and your brother were truly ambassadors breaking down those barriers. And, and that's one of the things I think that makes those videos so fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we always call ourselves the global Bedouins. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, it's on the premise and there's a, there's a Bedouin proverb that says, you know, when you break bread with somebody, that person is no longer your enemy. Mm. You know, they're your, they're your, they're your friend. And, and we, we certainly felt that. I mean, we traveled to, to 24 countries like this. I've been to a further 30 countries just like this. And I tell you, I never felt anything but love from everybody. Wow. Generally, you know, people are, are curious. They, they're, they're looking and they're watching and they're like, what is that? I want to ask you, you know, like, what, what is that, you know, on, on your head and why? But generally, everybody was super courteous. And we were even in the U.S. actually after the Boston bombing. Mm. And, you know, we were in Austin, Texas, a fantastic city, one of my favorite cities in, in the U.S. And, and everybody was super amazing. I mean, we, we never, cool. honestly, I never had an issue. And I, I you know, I, I would say, but, you know, we've been to... Argentina, we've been to Chile, Costa Rica, the U.S., Italy, South Africa, you name it. No issues. Japan, Korea, uh, Thailand, Australia. Never one time were we ridiculed. Never one time were we belittled. Not at all. And it's amazing. There's a lot of goodness in the world, uh, Matt. That is amazing. And yeah, happy that you found that and and happy that it comes across in the videos. And, And that's just such a great message, such amazing stuff that what you've brought together there. And, and I can't help but think now, I, you know, I, as I was telling you before we started the, the interview here, I'm watching you while you're at the expo in Dubai. <laughs> and I, like I said, I was there for about six hours. I ate at the, at the African pavilion and, and had, oh, I, 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 I couldn't eat enough. I, I, I <laughs> I knew this was like my only night there, and I yeah. and so I'm watching you there. I'm like I sh- I wish you to watch made these videos before <laughs> I went, so I could know exactly where to go. How does this tie into the expo in Dubai? I mean, what an exciting place! It's it's 
My God, I, I, I've probably been there over 15 times now. We just we just shot the 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 new global campaign for for Expo, which is I mean phenomenal. And my God, it's it, such a great feeling while while you're there. You know, I, I keep saying 192 countries. So if we consider a lot of people consider 197 being every country in in the in the world. You've got 192 here. I know that it takes most people seven to 10 years to be able to hit all 197 countries. I've seen people do that. Imagine that you can actually do all of that right here in one place, okay? So, so that, that's, that's number one, that, that's amazing. More than that, imagine you are walking into a different culture and you can walk into 10 or 20 different cultures every single day. Mm. How amazing is that? The opportunity for you to see what people wear, what people eat, what pe- you know, how people speak, you know, how they are. It's, it's just unbelievable. And whoever doesn't take advantage of that opportunity is really, really missing out. And I love how they package it in a way. I know a lot of people think that Expo is an entertainment destination. I know that a lot of people, before they go there, they say, is this like Disneyland? Am I going to go on rides? <laughs> there's certainly entertainment, but there's so much to learn and get out of it. It's oh. such an amazing entertainment uh, de- destination. And, and I love that. You know, I love, you know, going to the world, but if you're not going to the world, then come to the world over here in Dubai. And, and I have to say that, you know, Dubai historically has always been this, right? The, Dubai has, has always been a microcosm of the world. I mean, I'll tell you this, my my family, every single member of my family speaks five languages. Mm. Every single one of member of my family has been so connected to global culture. I I kid you not. I mean, I, I, I travel around the world and I'm rarely ever culture shocked, you know, and and, and I guess, you know, my, my family's done a lot of travel. So my father and grandfather, but generally this is a city and a country where you potentially will bump into six, seven different people from six, seven different countries and six, seven different cultures. And I tell you, the five languages I speak, I use four of them almost every single day. (laughs) Yeah, that's something that struck me when I was there is just how international the city is. And you'll meet people everywhere from every culture. It's just absolutely amazing to be in that much of a you know to use the american term a melting pot it it truly is and to see you know the roles people have and where you meet them and you know i love just you know going to the mall and walking down and just taking it all in it's just such a it's i i would say for someone if if this is one of the first trips you take it might be a little challenging but welcome to the world. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. how I feel when I'm there. It's just welcome to the world. Everybody's here. And, and then going to Expo, like you said, and visiting some of the different countries. And I love it when some of the countries would have a restaurant right there in their building. And you can get a taste of something that's unique to their culture, or their country. And then also seeing how the different countries uh, represented themselves through exhibits, through the people, uh, through the message that they were bringing. It, it, it was really a, a phenomenal, phenomenal time. Like I said, I hope to get back out there again. Hey, Matt, and, and you said it. You know, I, I think really the premise for this is to tell everybody, you know, let's connect, let's talk, let's learn about each other, and let's move forward from this point onwards thinking about how we're going to do things together going forward, no matter what that is. And that is the message of, of Expo. You know, it's yeah. come over here. Let's shake hands. Let's, let's hug. Wear a mask, but hug. <laughs> and, and let's figure out what we want to do when it comes to, you know, opportunities, and whether that is in the space of blockchain or Bitcoin, or whether it's in the space of sustainability, or whether it's in the space of, you know, a driverless transport or mobility or, or, or anything like that. And, and I love that. You know, people are very, I see a lot of people there and I see a lot of thought to, hey, what else can we do together? And I think that's, that's, that's very, very powerful. You know, I, I'm kind of sad. You know, we have two and a half months left oh. and I'm sad that that's, you know, it's no longer going to be here, at least in its entirety. So part right. of it is going to stay as I understand, but oh. uh, 
But yeah, it's amazing. Such a fascinating conversation. If you want to hear the full episode, jump over to sitelogic.com and click on podcast in the navigation. The interview with Rashid Alawadi is from February 8th, 2022, and Matt does episode numbers, so look for episode 74. That's episode 74 at sitelogic.com. Click on podcast up in the navigation there. Big thank you to Matt Bailey at The Endless Coffee Cup and SightLogic for allowing us to share that segment. Do go subscribe to the podcast. Matt does a great job and has conversations about far more than influencer, influencer marketing. Great show for business leaders, for marketers, for entrepreneurs. SightLogic.com, then click on podcast. You can also find Endless Coffee Cup on the Marketing Podcast Network. Quick links to the shows, the subscription buttons and such are all at marketingpodcasts.net. You might also find a few other shows to add to your queue there, marketingpodcasts.net. Folks, don't forget to drop Winfluence, a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You should pause and do it now so you don't forget. Unless, of course, you're driving. If you are, do it later. Please don't wreck or d- distracted driving. That's dangerous. Also, if you'd like a deep dive on influencer marketing topics every so often, subscribe to my email newsletter at jason.online slash subscribe. I send it every four to six weeks and go deep on a topic to make your influence marketing smarter. Want to help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome? Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you may want my answer to or take on. Record a voice memo and send it via email or just send a regular email if you don't want to record yourself. That email address is jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Hi, I'm Sarah Panous, and if you work in the content marketing space, I invite you to subscribe to the Marketing with Empathy podcast. Join me and other industry experts as we share ideas to help you connect with your audience to drive better business results. I've spent the last 20 years driving content for billion-dollar brands. Now I help marketers build winning brand storytelling strategies to reduce feelings of overwhelm and confusion. Think of it as a content marketing jam session mixed with chicken soup for the soul. Subscribe to Marketing with Empathy today. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.